And I will start recording. And uh, we certainly appreciate everyone coming out and being with us tonight. If you're online, thank you for your patience. We're started here, have a good crowd in the room at, at St. Luke's. And I don't ever, I don't always remember to say this, but St. Luke's has been a tremendous uh, uh, host on multiple occasions, not just tonight. And we certainly appreciate them and their staff who make this space available to us. My name is Jeff Hammond. I'm a consultant working for the National Department of Transportation. David Greaves up here up front is, is a colleague of mine. He's running that online portion uh, of the program, monitoring the chat and so forth. Um, we're gonna talk about 28th Avenue North. We've had a good conversation about uh, traffic calming and, and other streets in this neighborhood, but tonight we're really focused on this one section. This is the second time we've met. It's been a while. It was the end of, it was the end of September uh, when we were last here uh, talking about this project. And, uh, and we've uh, done a little more work on that. We're gonna share that with you tonight. I'm gonna cover three main things. We'll try to make up a little bit of time and get you, get you guys back out enjoying a, a rare <laughs> warm evening. So you may, if you've got things to do, uh, we'll, we'll try to get you on your way here. We're gonna cover a little bit of background on the program, just how you got here into this program. Some of that, there's a good conversation about some of that. We're gonna look at uh, the plan as it exists right now. And then we're gonna talk about next steps. Where are we going from here uh, on this project? So traffic calming, as, as we were talking a little bit earlier about, is a residential street program. We don't typically do bigger streets like Ed Temple or like Clarksville Pike or like Buchanan. Uh, we're focused on where you live. This is, this is for you and, and the people who live on 28th Avenue. We do focus on, re on physical solutions. We put things in the street. A lot of people think of us as the the trap is the um, as the speed cushion program, and that's they wouldn't be wrong. We do a lot of that, and because we find that nothing slows traffic down quite like a physical obstruction in the street. Sometimes that's what it takes. We do focus on reducing speed. That's as opposed to trying to shift traffic and move it. We're not really trying to force traffic to move back out on the Ed Temple. That would be nice, I guess, if it would. It's more built for that. But um, we know that's very difficult to do. And so we really just focus on keeping traffic where it is, but making sure it's operating responsibly at a, at a slower speed. The last one there just has to do with, we don't focus uh, on spots. We try to look at entire uh, sections of the street. Um, a lot of this is, is uh, kind of similar uh, themes there. We do, we do um, like to say on that last one, we do have limited resources. Um, and that's largely because of, of this slide, which is it's a tremendously popular program. That is a lot of people want these resources. And so uh, when you all were selected um, back in the summer, uh, we had over 400 streets, just like 28. 28 was one street that was requested. We had over 400 of those. And so we've been, you know, we, we can't do a whole lot. We do about 50. Um, projects like this a year, um, 25 at a time in two different um, uh, cohorts. And so uh, it's a lot for us. If you think about that, that's about one a week rolling off the assembly line, but it's, it's a long way to go to, to knock a dent in that, in that 400. Uh, I did skip a slide here, and I wanna be sure we mention that. This is um, a reference to Hub Nashville, which this is about speed control and, and traffic, but Hub Nashville is a great one-stop shop for a lot of other services you may find in um, Nashville. Um, and it's not just NDOT, not just Department of Transportation stuff. It's it's all departments represented there. So uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, it's a great tool to have. How 28 got here, you may recall, we, we um, always uh, cover this information at the first meeting but um, it's largely about speed. Speed makes up about half the, the score of our prioritization. We do look at crashes and then we look at other things like, do you have sidewalks or not? Do you have places where a pedestrian could walk? Because we know uh, pedestrian and bicycle activity and, and uh, traffic calming kind of go hand in hand. We know there's plenty of people around Davidson County that can't even go for a walk around their neighborhood because they're scared they're gonna get run over by a car. Some people can't go out comfortably and check their mail <laughs> in the mailbox, it, it gets that crazy. So we do have some kind of non-infrastructure type scoring, 
Uh, you all do have sidewalks, so you didn't score very well in that category, but you made for it, made up for it in your speed. You, you were uh, back when you were selected, you were ranked fourth of, of all the other ones that we selected in terms of the speed. So not a good situation, but you're certainly not alone. Uh, this is uh, happening. Uh, the high speeds are happening all over Davidson County. And this is a map that shows you what we're looking at. So the, the project that we are, are contemplating doing is on 28th Avenue. You see it at the blue line there. The red line just to the left of that is Ed Temple Boulevard. It's red because it's an arterial. That means it's the highest classifi classification of roadway we've got in Davidson County. You see another red line, that's Clarksville Pike. That tells you how important those roads are. Those are the big roads we typically don't do any traffic calming on. 28th is a local street. The purple one is Buchanan. That's called a collector. So it's a little bit lower classification from a, an arterial, but a little bit above a local road. It's that in-between road. And then I've got a couple other colors on there. The, the green lines, uh, you may have heard uh, Councilman Taylor mentioned that uh, there are other projects that are coming. Some of y'all may have may be here for that, may have been involved in that. I, I thought so. And uh, it, it is still coming. He just uh, gave, a, gave an update on that. We can get that information about where we are on those. But those, those have been decided. There's no question. They're funded. We're, we've ordered materials. We're just waiting on that to come in, and it's kind of in the process of, of installation. But it's important to see that in with respect to what we're talking about here. So you got the blue line that's proposed and then the three green lines that are happening just to kind of give you an idea about where we'll have traffic calming in this neighborhood uh, if, if this passes. By the way, the, the, the plan that I'm going to show you is, is really consistent with what we're, we're proposing on Jenkins 25th and 26th. So it's kind of a seamless look at all of it. It's, um, Oh, we'll work together very well, we think. A little bit about the process. We're here at meeting two. Um, we've only come two circles since meeting one, but but that actually is covering quite a bit of ground. Uh, and, and meeting two, this is, this is kind of our last chance usually to look at that plan, massage it, change anything if we think it needs it. Um, and if not, we're ready to go, you know, kind of into the last two phases, really, which are really more about implementation. We're going to talk about the online ballot process, and then uh, construction would be after that. So you're 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 kind of entering the home stretch here with this project. So let's move into what we're planning for the street. We talked about this last time. And speed cushions, as I mentioned before, they're, they're our bread and butter. We use them all the time. We, we have really good experience with them. We're having good um, uh, effectiveness, good feedback from the effectiveness on them. Um, they're hold, they hold up well. We use the same product. So what you, what you will see on 25th, 26th Jenkins is exactly the same product, same manufacturer. It'll look the same. It'll wear the same. So, uh, and we also have these in other places uh, in, in town. So you can go drive these and experience that and see what they feel like. But a speed cushion is a raised, sometimes we call them speed bumps. Some people are speed humps. Sometimes they'll call them speed bumps, but it's about three inches tall and it's ramped up. And then they come in different lengths and they come in these little pads like this. The reason why we use speed cushions uh, and, and why they're called that, they look like little pillows that lay there. And it's so that um, they can be straddled by a larger, we, uh, larger wheelbase vehicle like a, an emergency, an, an ambulance or a fire truck or something like that. So that's really our go-to in the county. Um, it, it, they, they're, again, performing very well. Uh, we have planned here seven-foot-long speed cushions. Again, it'll, it'll, it'll match just what we're uh, working with on uh, the other streets. 28th is a wide street. It's about 30 feet wide-ish. And so we will be using a, a set of three, like you see in that picture on the left. We can configure them differently. What we're trying to do there is just to make sure there's not enough room for somebody to drive around them because they will drive around them. If, they'll even drive off the road occasionally. So we're looking at the edges of the street. You've got a curb on one side, I know, but the other side, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it does, right? It's, it's just a ditch on that side. But 
Uh, we'll look at that and make sure occasionally we'll have to use these, these plastic things with the purpose of just put something there so people can't drive around them and they, they have to kind of, we don't have any of those uh, white delineators planned on this project. So this is, uh, this may be a little hard to see, but uh, it's, it's really a, a pretty basic plan. Um, there's not a lot of detail to get into, but we can go into a little more than this if you want to. But what we're planning is four locations of speed cushions. Uh, this street's only a, about a third of a mile long. So four is, is a little closer space than what we typically do, but um, okay, yeah, thank you. So the, the two boxes, let me kind of point this out. You see the two boxes and that just shows you, uh, it, it's just something for the engineering plans. But the, the yellow, the uh, pink, the purple line, get my colors right here, that's 28th Avenue. So this, this is Jenkins here. Uh, no, this is uh, Buchanan here. Jenkins is actually this street. Buchanan on up to Ed Temple at the top. So we're running from Buchanan to Ed Temple, the whole little stretch right there. Uh, and then you can see 25th and 26th, but does that help? You see where we're talking about? We're, we're, and we at the church are right up here at the, right there, that's the church. Okay. I, I think um, there, there is some signage that accompanies these. Um, we'll put, you know, speed hump signs. So there'll be a, a, a yellow warning sign. So you, you, won't, you won't miss them. The, the um, speed cushions themselves have that reflective marking on them so they can be seen at night. Um, but that's not Buchanan. No, ma'am, 28th. Mm -hmm. So we won't put we won't be putting anything on Buchanan. This will be for people that are coming down Buchanan and might turn on 28th. We were talking about this earlier. If people are kind of coming down here down Buchanan and they see that light over here at Ed Temple, we think a lot of people make that right and come up your street, and and that's where we get a lot of this speeding. And and they're doing that quickly. They're coming fast, and so they will encounter these four sets of speed cushions. Um, we do have a little more detail in a, in a image like this. Um, let me say a word about this. What you're looking at is actually the design plans and we will be making these available online along with this ballot. So when people get this ballot, there'll be a, a link there. They can click that. They can go in there and go into as much detail as they want to and, and see exactly where we're placing these. So I'll just read this. This one says, it's pointing to this first set of speed cushions and it says the speed cushion uh, configuration would be 45 feet north of the edge of the driveway at 1804 28th Avenue North. So you can go out there if you want to and measure it off and see exactly where we're thinking that would go. And we make that available for all four sets uh, of speed cushions there. Any, any questions or comments about the, the design plan? Again, it's pretty basic. It's pretty much what we showed you back in September. We've done a little more homework to, to pinpoint the locations on those, uh, but, but you can see the three sets there. You also see the signage that we use. It's just that diamond says speed cushion in a, in a 20 mile an hour plate there. Well, let's talk about the next step in. The, 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 Immediate next step we have, if, if there's consensus on that plan, um, is, is the balloting process. So as uh, Councilman was talking about a little bit ago, we do have a new process. We don't go door to door anymore. 28 was in the first set of, of projects. We're actually totally going to this new process. And so what we're gonna do is, if you all live on 28 uh, and you own the property, you may have gotten a, me a, a card for this meeting to get a card in the mail. We're going to be sending us the same set of cards out, obviously with a different message. And the message there is, is going to say, scan this QR code like you see in the upper left-hand corner, and it's going to take you straight to a national.gov balloting page. And that's what you see down in the bottom. And all you got to do is tell it, here's my name uh, and, and address, and do I support traffic calming or not? Yes or no. Like I mentioned, you also got a link to those design plans so you can get more information. 
uh, this this meeting's also recorded. I think our last meeting was also recorded. So you got a lot of information, you know, about what you're voting for and and, and what the uh, the project is all about. Um, there's also a little code that will be right down here in this bottom corner. You'll fill that out on the on the web. That just lets us know that the people are voting that we intended to be voting for it. Uh, and, and the people that, that will get the opportunity to do that are is anybody that owns property that abuts the right of way of 28th Avenue in this area that we're talking about. So you see it again here, all of those little yellow squares, those are the properties we will be targeting for this vote. Those will go to the owner. So if, if you have someone that lives there and, and they're not the owner, they're renting the, the property, they, they won't get the card. It'll go to the owner who may be, we know, they may be in Texas, they may be in Michigan or wherever else. So 28th Avenue. This is 28th Avenue, just a different, a different look at it. Okay. Um, once we, that, that vote will stay open for six weeks, which is another nice thing. These, these petitions were going on and on. At the end of six weeks, we're done. We know where we stand. We look at all of the votes that came in. Uh, if 10 people out of all of those properties, if 10 people vote, we need seven of them to be approved, to say, yes, we want it. So we're looking for 66%, two thirds of them, whatever comes back to be in favor of it. And that's when we move and, and do the, the project. Our track record's pretty good. Um, I'd say most most uh, ballots were in the 40, 30, 40 percent participation, which is pretty good. Um, and uh, and and most of them to this point have have passed. The overwhelming number have passed. Once you get to this thing, and we've had all of these talks that you know, it becomes clear. Some some projects are controversial, no doubt about it. Um, but uh, by and large, they they go pretty well. It passed. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else do we need to say about that? We do. We won't ballot things like this property. We ballot residential properties. If it's vacant, we don't send them a card. But if there's a house on it, and uh, and it's a residential land use, we, we ballot those people. We won't ask churches, we won't ask um, uh, certain things like that. Com no commercial properties, I don't think you have any of those anyway. Um, I think that's it. Any questions on the, the ballot, who's balloted or anything like that? Let me open the ballot and go out. Okay, good. Next slide is, so after tonight, we, we ask for, <laughs> We ask for about two weeks. I don't think we need that long. I mean, if, if you all are saying this looks good, that we're ready to go, um, today's Monday, yeah, by the end of this week, we can have these out and they'll, they'll, start, they'll start hitting the mail in a couple of days. Um, so uh, that's, that's that first thing is a couple of days for that. The voting period we keep open for six weeks uh, and then materials is, is, I mean, it could be another two months. It's the supply chain stuff is, is, uh, it's just tricky. It sounded like maybe we're a little quicker than that now. Although if they're, if they just ordered the other ones and they're coming in April, that's about right. And then another about two months to install implement. So we're looking at later in the summer uh, for this one. If we, if we go and it passes after six weeks, um, it would, the schedule wouldn't be too far off of that one. Yeah. 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 Would uh, would ordering things or what can speed up what can speed up the problem? Maybe this is what people want to know. What can make what's the, the quickest way? If we leave here tonight and say, Yes, I think this is good and then you get email, do you need emails from No. No, at this point, uh all I need is from this meeting being our second meeting kind of agreement that you know, the plans look good. We will go ahead and get those uploaded onto um, NDOT's website. So the plans will be available. And at the same time, we'll, we'll be sending those cards out. I think Gil normally works with you and says, are you guys ready? We're ready to go and we'll send those out. And so that, that right now is the quickest we can do, we can make it at this point. 
the thing that's holding us up now is us sending those ballot cards out. And, and what are the things that neighbors can do that should? Because a lot of times when these things come in the mail, we kind of throw them away or we do something different with them. What can neighbors do to make sure that their their neighbors are ready to go? I know that they've all talked to their community groups about it. Mm -hmm. I can, yeah. Well, yeah. The, uh, one of the nice things, if there was a nice thing about going door to door, was there was some like, you know, participation. You had you had to talk about it, and people would say, well, I don't like this, or I love this, or whatever, and, and there was some dialogue. That can still happen, and we still encourage that. You know, as much as you have social media networks or in person meetings, neighborhood meetings, talk to your neighbors at church, whatever, bring it up. Take your card and show them. Say you'll be getting one of these. Be sure to look at it and and act accordingly you know vote tell them tell them how to vote if you want to i don't care but uh you know people people have the right and want to know about what's going on and they have the right to, to have some say so on on the project and so that should still happen we love it when it does i think it, it makes for a better project and so feel free to spread this word we'll we'll get this link you can say hey if you want to watch this watch this video or this meeting those kind of things but yeah absolutely just because we're taking over and sending that ballot out, don't don't let don't uh, let that lead you to think that you don't have any any say so in the participation of it. It's still very important. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. We hear that. All right. Well, I won't belabor the point. <laughs> I sound like y'all are ready to get ready. What What are we standing here for? Uh, absolutely. Well, thank you all, and uh, we always appreciate coming to Councilman Taylor's district and doing these. Uh, that they, they go smoothly, and you know we look forward to sending that out, uh, and get getting getting things underway. So, uh, Alex, we're pretty soon. It'll be like a six week window. Six week window. The the ballot board um, will have a date. Right up there is really tiny up in the upper right hand corner of the upper card. It'll show the date. That'll be the date when we'll cut ballots off. Um, but we'll make that clear in that wording so you'll know we're going to this date and then we stop. Um, you you can. I mean, I, I think NDOT is okay with like, you know, providing a, an update on um, where the Voting stands like as we get a little bit closer, you can you can reach out to them. That reminds me, I did have one more slide, and that's our contact information. I'm the bottom one there. Um, I'm Jeff, and then Gil Thomas, the top name there is is the Metro Traffic Calming Project Manager. So he's a great resource as well. So any questions you think of or um. um you know, concerns you have, feel free to reach out to either one of us. Uh, but but we'll move forward here. We'll we'll get this started, and um, hopefully you'll see those maybe maybe toward the end of this week or early part early next week start arriving in the mail. Uh, we don't have any scheduled on Buchanan right now, no, ma'am. You remember those colors, Buchanan? <clears throat> it was a purple street. We talked about it being a collector, which is like a little bit. It's made for a little bit more traffic than like 28th is, that's one reason why we don't have anything on Buchanan now. So generally, 26th and Buchanan, um, we thought what they've done at 26th and Buchanan when I went there, being that it's a collective street, which um, from what from what I so collector, yeah, collector streets which carry a lot of traffic, like um, it's generally set up. We generally don't want to put speed humps along that because of the amount of traffic, as well as the amount of buses, city buses um, on streets such as the Canyon, because the city buses generally can't go over certain things. So when we, if for instance, the 26, they're putting speed humps there, but they're only doing it in certain areas, so the buses don't bother. They're not going to put them down on 26 miles. We're north uh, north of Buchanan. We're from Buchanan to Clarksville Pike. Yeah, so Buchanan to Clarksville. Yeah, no, they are on yep. 26. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're gonna put it on 26. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so down, going down 26. 
-hmm. So yeah, so we have a like So we already have this so this process that we talked about here, it was completed on twenty sixth last year and they have ordered the equipment because everything's been on back order. So the equipment's been ordered. So it should arrive between now and April. Between April and June, they should be installed on 26, 27 of June. They're not going to put them in the can. I've fought for McKinnon, and the, my life as a non engineer lost that battle because the engineers told me that's not going to put um, That worked for the city. I'm not sure if you are you on this this property. So this is 20 this is 26 and the way it kind of offsets right here and that's Buchanan and and we did hear from those folks and and we do have some um reflective things going in to try and solve some of that problem. So there was there was a little bit more than just some speed cushions at that one intersection. I'll tell you. So when this when we first had these meetings there was a buffer, uh, so the director of NDOT said maybe we can do a, um, like a boulder buffer as opposed, so boulders U-shaped around there where people are coming off and going in and coming off in the end, because you got our state representative here, you guys live here, so you live over here, so we got our state representative here, you live here, we've got, um, the Buford's here, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And then we have, uh, I can't remember her name, but she's right beside um, Ms. Burks, who did 25th, 26th Avenue. And so, um, so you've got these properties. So they were there, and but legally, we could put a boulder blockade in front of your homes because if the, if the, the jack leg that was driving the car erratically runs into those boulders and dies, it would be legally responsible for the city because we put those boulders there. Um, so we tried to find other ways to put kind of pylons or something there that will um, either be reflective so they notice them or hopefully to slow them down. There's been, there's been many conversations about putting a stop sign there. I have... And I haven't been able to crease that just yet, uh, due to this being a collector street. Um, it took me it took me quite some time to get. So, have you been down Arthur Avenue lately? Yeah. So Arthur, going along down Arthur, you have stop signs of Jane right there by the park, and then you also have stop signs up by Mount uh, Bethel. Mm -hmm. So it took us a few years to get that bridge for them to kind of listen to. So I've been having numerous conversations. I've walked the area with the Indot and the Buford to come out. And we've been really working hard to try to get some kind of traffic coming there. It could be a stop sign. It could be something like we tried the boulder idea. So if you want to run into my yard, you run into a boulder before you run into my house. But unfortunately, <laughs> but unfortunately that was a very, it, it would have got us, Legal would not let, so the legal department in the NDOT would not let them move forward with this because it was in the last year's, so this is like uh, two sets ago traffic calming measures. And so that didn't happen. So we, they did add something, nothing great, but I think if we can continue to crease and work through the stop sign. And again, I've, <laughs> I think I've had three directors in, in, Public Works in that since I've been in office. And so I've talked to all three of those directors, so one every year. So I've talked to all three of those directors about this. But once I get movement on one, somebody else comes in. And so this person, we've got movement here to be able to do it. But what happens if I if, if we put the application, so if, if they put the application in and it goes to our engineers for traffic zones or traffic and parking engineers to uh, traffic and uh, Commission, they will either vote up or down. And right now, they're looking at they, this will be a vote down to add a four-way stop there due to 
the clinky shoe. So we, we had some work to do, some massaging to do to get there. I think we can get there, but it, it, it will take some time. Um, like I said, along Arthur Avenue, it took, I think it took an act of God because the engineers believe, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, it's just an engineer. Engineers believe that stop signs and stop lights exacerbate speeding problems because people will get to a stop sign. This is what they tell me. I don't agree. But this is what they tell me. I don't have an issue. People get to the stop sign, and that time that they wasted at the stop sign, and they feel that they wasted time, they then speed up even faster to get to where they were going because they stopped. Is that that's kind of how that's, I that's part that's like, part of it. The the other part of the philosophy is if we have a bunch of stop signs that are trying to slow traffic down, people get to where they ignore all of them. So we put stop signs where we need people to stop to control the right of way for safety and not where we're politely asking you to please slow down. So when we're when we're asking you to slow down, we, we that's why we we this, there's nothing more effective than what we're planning here. We go to these meetings all the time where people say, you know, I've got a stop sign out here. They fly through here all the time, you know, and we'll say that's why we're not proposing stop signs because, the, you know, you, you can't win. But, but yeah, that's part of it. And and generally what's happening in like this intersection is that it's all set. It's all set. You can't – well, it's not the, it's not the vision. I've stayed I've, – I've, I've, I sit there. I've sat in Mr. Buford's yard because he lets me at night. He's like, you got to come over here at night. I said, well, where am I going to sit? Just sit in my yard. So I sit in Chris and Shaw's yard at night, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. They know I'm there. And I see people blow through the stop sign that already exists, being that we have this uh, 26 with offset like this. So 26 is comes, you got to come over and go down if you're going, if you're heading north. What happens a lot of times on, on 26 uh, in, in that area is that people lose control probably into y'all's house. Think damn good thing used to my house. Right. My lady's trying to use it. No, you okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It just angers me when I see those people going so fast. He has torn down my same spot. I bet. And I got a steel one up there now. Hopefully they don't get that one now. But they come through. I mean, like I said, and, and the beautiful said, be careful where you sit. Just sit close to the house because a lot of times when they get up and look at their cameras, two or three cars have been in their yard. That is. And so we're we're trying to I'm trying to, to ask NDOT of safe ways and safe measures. Um and I'm getting pushed back on stop signs. I'm gonna be honest. I've asked for stop signs at twenty six in Buchanan for since I've been in office. And I've gotten pushback after pushback after pushback based on the I think it's incorrect theoretical and I can tell you I've, well Jeff actually used to be one of the people that tell me what I thought was incorrect when he was working at Indy. <laughs> I would argue him to sell his balloon effect. But we're still kind of working on it to kind of breach the idea of either stop signs or something. Because flashing lights don't necessarily get it. People notice them. But once they know flashing lights really, it's not a stop sign, it's not a stop light, they then continue to then, well, I like to say, put the fire. So there's an implicit bias that I can just come through. And so then we have these cars that are coming up at this weird intersection that are that are not necessarily because the thing is they not, not they won't be knocking over in the fence if they're stopping and inching out and then go. They not stopping at all. That's what that's why your fence is getting because they're just blowing through. And I think another piece of this with your fence is that once we get the traffic calming measures in place on 26. It becomes a deterrent for people to drive up and down 26. And so hopefully we will see that was another thing. How do we then add a deterrent for people to use that pathway? So can we then create a deterrent on 26? So now it's not, now you got pumps to go over all the way down 26. So instead of going all the way across and then flying 26 up over to Dodge City, or coming from Dodge City and flying down 26 trying to get to 23rd, now what we can do is make this hopefully a deterrent. We put them on 23rd between Osage and uh, Buchanan. I don't know if you've seen those lately, because you know it comes down. The neighbors on 24th we're working with them now. They're trying to get they're trying to get that application ready for this next opening. And so on 23rd and Buchanan, what I've heard from the applicant that put 
included in the traffic calming application is that this is created in the parent. And that's why the people on 24th want theirs because now they're going down 24th instead of 25. So hopefully, and I'm still going to work on that intersection because I think it's just a dangerous intersection with that offset. But we have to, uh, hopefully, this 26th Avenue North will give us the parent for people to either use the street unless you need to be on the street. And that's hopefully, this is part of this 28th is what's happening on 28th, you have the people in Olympic Park and then the folks that live on 28th, Vance, Deerfield, who live in this neighborhood. What's happening is people don't want to wait at this light on, on 28th and McCann, or they don't want to um, wait on the train or whatever may be happening. And so what they're doing is cutting down through here, coming down through here, speeding all the way down 28th, and then busting left on Buchanan Street and then going that way. And so hopefully, we, the goal is to keep people from using the, 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 the local traffic lanes, so your residential traffic lanes, the goal is to use those as for local residential traffic, and then to continue to push people toward the, those collectors and majors. Um, so you have Ed Temple, push them there. You have, um, because the thing is, if you're trying to cut through to get to Foxville Highway down 26, the reason it's an easy cut through is because it's wide open and, and rarely trapped. Because it's a residential, residential eight neighborhoods are rarely trapped. And so we're, we're getting the bumps, and that's what I was going to read, and I think after I read that, this is from Gil Thomas. Mr. Thomas emailed me. Uh, last week, the materials for these streets, 25th, 26th, and Jenkins, the materials for these streets are to be ordered this week. We should see those materials arrive by late April. Once they arrive, um, installation should happen prior to June. Um, they've apologized. He says, I apologize for the delay. We've seen immense increases in volumes of the NSTC. I don't know what that actually was. It's a traffic calming program. So, natural, yeah. So uh, NSTC program and are seeing installation delays across the entire program. And so I've got, uh, like out of those 10 streets that I named last year, you guys have three here. Um, there's only been one in the 23rd. And 23rd, and that's what I was trying to say earlier when we were kind of just talking at the beginning, those people had it together. Y'all got it together for 28. There was a whole lot of questions. Like folks were like, well, I don't know if I want uh, stuff on my street on 26, 26. And then it was like, well, can we add Jenkins? And then so that became one of the things that started snowballing into something bigger and it kept pushing back, pushing back. Uh, then we then we did went door to door and got the people to sign the uh, thing, but we didn't have the property owner sign, which then pushed you back even more. And so with this one. That's why I, I recommend just going to this because they're going to send it directly to the people that we already have on the list. Um, I know Alfonso and Justin go. <laughs> I know what y'all are going to do to get it done. <laughs> so, so they're going to be able to get it done. So I think 26th Avenue, once, once we install those speed humps, I think that that's going to limit the, the through traffic from the south side of 26 to the north side of 26 and coming over. Because hopefully, the goal is hopefully to become the parent, the parent that people don't want to use that as a cut through. Because 26 at the end of the day, even though it leads up to two collectors and the major, you know, Foxville Highway here, it's still a residential area. Because the thing is, we don't necessarily want people cutting. We want people to go all the way down Foxville Highway to the east side of the canyon and then go into the neighborhoods from there if they're trying to get through to go to, you know, the backside over uh, this park and all that stuff. So we don't want them necessarily cut through Cumberland Gardens to get to this park. We want them to go around Cumberland Gardens. So hopefully that's why we put it on those. So 24, or 25th and 26th are the two streets that everybody uses because they go all the way from Clarksville Highway to the Gannon Street to get to this south side to this park. Why did you like about 24? 24th was in the application. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe, so this came from the Cumberland Gardens group, and I don't believe Cumberland Gardens, 
completely the 24th as Cumberland Gardens, am I correct? Okay. So I believe Cumberland Gardens felt that they were more or less protecting or, or uh, securing their community when they wrote these plans. And so 24th isn't seen as a part of that community. That was a on the corner of 24th, 26th. Mm -hmm. Which which one? Uh, 2314, on the corner of the corner. Can I ask one other question? Mm -hmm. So I have another property on 26th and um, on the other side. Let's close this meeting. Okay. And, um, yeah. I, maybe you can, we can get, I can get you my phone number. I, talk to you. I just want to know how to go about this. Okay. Yeah. I think we did have one. Uh, I saw a hand raise on the online portion. Was there someone on the call that wanted to ask a question? Did I see that? Okay. Messages that Okay. Mr. Branding, do you have a question for us here? All right, well, we'll go ahead and close this portion of the meeting. Again, thank you all for your your attendance and your interest in this project, and uh, thank those of you who are online. And with that, we'll tell you good night. Thank you.